Our top stories this hour, the rebel leader who has filmed boasting of killing a Russian pilot from the military jet down by Turkey is allegedly a Turkish citizen with links to an ultra-nationalist movement. Two prominent Turkish journalists are arrested on terrorism charges after the alleged state intelligence is helping to smuggle weapons to ISIL in Syria. Also ahead this hour, declassified emails from the U.S. State Department reveal a CNN reporter was getting instructions from a government official on what to tweet. Twenty-four hour news live from the Russian capital. You're watching RT International. My name's Yunan O'Neill. Welcome to the program. Details have emerged about the Syrian rebel commander who boasted of killing a Russian pilot after Turkey's downing of the Russian bomber jet earlier this week. It appears that the leader of the Turkmen militia, whose brigade shot at the pilots who had ejected from the jet, is allegedly a Turkish citizen with an ultra-nationalist background. RT's William Whiteman brings us more. Shortly after Turkey shot down the Russian warplane, these fighters boasted online that they'd machine-gunned a Russian pilot attempting to parachute to safety. Our comrades opened fire into the air. We all did. The pilots died in the air. Our fighters will bring the bodies here. If so, then that constitutes a war crime under the Geneva Convention. The militants themselves were identified as Syrian Turkmen rebels fighting against President Assad. Only there's something more about the leader of this group, who's allegedly not even a Turkmen, but simply Turkish. Several Turkish outlets have previously written about a son of an ex-mayor of a Turkish province who left the country to fight for Turkmen abroad. It was confirmed to us by several investigative journalists. I found out that he's actually from Turkey. He's from Elazığ, province of Turkey in, in East Turkey. And his name is Alparslan uh, Çelik. And he is the son of ex-mayor of uh, a sub-district in Elazığ province. Albazan Celik is the son of the former MHP mayor. Albazan Celik was in Iraq before he went to Syria. In 2014, uh, Ramazan Celik uh, said in an interview that he knows that his son is in Iraq and he's uh, also proud of him. And in this photograph, we can see the fighter in question posing in front of the flag of the militant Turkish nationalist organization, the Grey Wolves. He's even making the signature hand salute of the group. But who are the Grey Wolves? Well, they're the youth wing of the Nationalist Movement Party, often abbreviated to the MHP, a hard-right political organization and one of the four major players in Turkish politics. Despite voicing criticism of Erdogan, they have collaborated with his Justice and Development Party on a range of issues and have been accused by critics of acting as the ruling party's lifeline. With pictures circulating online, it would appear to some as if the bedfellows of Turkish politics are once again working together, if indirectly. Erdogan's government gave the order to shoot down the plane, and the Grey Wolves supporter just happened to be there on the ground and finished off the job by killing one of the pilots. Well, we receive reaction to the conflict escalation from a former Lebanese president. He says the Turkish leader has been supporting extremist groups in the region for years. It is a well-known fact uh, in the world that uh, President Erdogan, uh, since five years, has been backing up the extremist fundamentalist. What happened between uh, 18 seconds, it was premeditated uh, because uh, the uh, Russian bombers were uh, shelling uh, all this uh, traffic that was going on uh, in the Turkmen mountains. Uh, at the same time, uh, they were upsetting the plans of uh, President uh, uh, Erdogan. So he thought he could do something and he did that crazy act. Well, the Syrian information minister also stated the illegal oil trade played a role in the incident. He says Turkey shot down the plane after Russia bombed convoys smuggling oil for a company owned by the son of Turkey's president. Meanwhile, in response to the attack, protesters have been rallying in Greece. 
The demonstrators gathered in front of the Turkish embassy in Athens, where they burned Turkish and American flags and chanted anti-war slogans. They then marched to the Greek parliament and EU offices. Well, similar sentiments were expressed in the Bulgarian capital, Sofia. Protesters gathered at the Turkish embassy to show solidarity with Russia. People also brought flowers and lit candles outside the Russian embassy. Well, amid the mounting spat between Russia and Turkey, an alleged recording of Turkish warnings to the Russian pilots is getting mass media coverage. Breaking news here, Turkey's military has just released an audio recording that it claims captured warnings that Turkish uh, fighter pilots issued to a Russian jet. This, says Turkey, was the pilot's final warning. <laughs> However, the Russian Defense Ministry says their Turkish counterparts told them they didn't release any audio recordings. Ankara also refused to give Russia any evidence regarding the attack, including those recordings. The Russian Defense Ministry has declared this denial as proof they are fake. And with the scandal gathering steam, some of what's being presented as evidence is questionable. The Turkish media is saying that this plane violated their airspace 10 times within five minutes. And during this 10 times, they sent out a warning to this plane. Vladimir Putin keeps saying that Turkey is aiding ISIS. Is that true? The Russians, especially when you're flying near an enemy uh, area like Turkey to the Russians, uh, you would definitely be listening to guards. The other big thing is this. Look, the Russians are not as good as people give them credit for. They think they're somehow, you know, the, the equivalent of the United States military. They're not. What do you think Putin's thinking tonight? Well, I think he's probably pretty embarrassed. Vladimir Putin, the president, has also tweeted, he's, he's tweeted several things regarding this. Turkey says that Russia invaded their airspace. Russia says that they did not. Who do you believe? I believe Turkey. Well, Turkey has been accused of helping fund Islamic State through the illegal oil trade. Photos have been posted on social media, allegedly showing the Turkish president's son with leaders of ISIL. Artiz Ali Petrenko traveled to Istanbul to see how Turkish media are handling the accusations. Rumors of hidden ties between the Turkish government or even the Erdogan family and Islamic State are ripening on social media. Amid a growing international urge to rid ISIL from black oil market cash flow, Moscow openly pointed the finger at Ankara. Vehicles transporting the oil are lined up in a chain and drive off into the horizon. It looks like it's an oil pipeline that's a living being. I'm talking about the oil supply on a commercial scale. We can see from the air where these vehicles are heading to. They're heading to Turkey day and night. RT caught up with a Turkish lawmaker for the Hatay province on Syria's doorstep. This member of the main opposition party says the claims of Erdogan and his government's involvement are not groundless. ISIS was earning $800 million a year from oil exports, and it was using this money to buy weapons, meaning oil was an instrument to finance terror. In Kirkuk, there are four Kurdish oil traders from northern Iraq who are close to Barzani, and through him, Dozens of dealers, mostly Turkish, buy oil and sell it to world markets. I asked about this in the Turkish parliament to the Minister of Energy. His answer was very interesting. He said, we buy oil from Barzani from northern Iraq. We can't know the origins of that oil, so that's not our problem. 
I flew to Turkey's biggest city to find out how far local journalists dug into this story. Investigating allegations of Turkish government and Erdogan family members' involvement in the oil trade with Islamic State proved to be quite difficult even in Istanbul. Opposition journalists in Turkey nowadays live in a constant state of fear of being thrown into jail at any given time. I was recording this piece on my way to the office of the only online news outlet whose boss agreed to answer our questions. At that very moment, the editor-in-chief of one of Turkey's few remaining independent newspapers, Cumhuriyet, was questioned in court, being accused of treason and espionage, a trial seen as Erdogan's vendetta to a report on arms smuggling to Syrian rebels. My interview went on amid tense attempts to catch a rare update from the courtroom. But the court hasn't made a decision yet. Okay, yeah, be yeah. sent to the court, just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Said Sefa, the editor-in-chief of Haberdar.com, told me his journalists hadn't looked into Turkey's role in ISIL oil smuggling. He couldn't direct me to any other correspondents working on the story either. Said says for local journalists, there's barely any point in doing such investigations, as they'd be dealt with even before anything can be found. The reason we can't tell you if the claims are true or not is because we as journalists can no longer investigate. People spread rumors, but we are not free to verify them. We also heard about a widening crackdown on press freedom when talking to the Turkish opposition. Events being covered in the international media can be completely underreported in Turkey. The reason for that is the crackdown on journalism. If a media company criticizes the government, it's seen as treason. For example, if I'd like to say something about the downing of the Russian fighter jet, I could end up facing treason charges. By the way, as I was about to finish writing this report, the court ordered to put Jom Kuriet newspaper's boss under arrest. Ilya Petrenko, RT, in Istanbul, Turkey. Well, indeed, editor-in-chief of the Chumhuriyet daily, Chan Dundar, now faces life imprisonment after being accused of membership of a terror organization, espionage and revealing confidential documents. He spoke to the media outside the courthouse. Bizzat şikayetçinin Cumhurbaşkanı olduğu bir soruşturma bu. Biz buraya gazeteciliği savunmaya geldik. Biz buraya halkın haber alma hakkını, kamuoyunun hükümet bir yalan söylüyorsa bunu bilme hakkını savunmaya geldik. Biz buraya hükümetlerin hiçbir şekilde illegal yollara sapmaması gerektiğini göstermeye, kanıtlamaya, bunun savunmasını yapmaya geldik. Well, last month, on the eve of parliamentary elections in Turkey, several opposition media outlets find themselves targeted by authorities. The office of one TV channel in Istanbul was raided and its broadcast briefly suspended. Officials cited an investigation over allegations of terror links. The channel is connected to an exiled rival of President Erdogan. The crackdown sparked protests over the suppression of media freedom in the country. Well, Turkey has a record of violating media freedoms. In September this year, a reporter went on trial accused of insulting the Prime Minister on Twitter. And in August, some UK journalists were arrested on terror charges. They were detained while filming clashes between police and Kurdish militia. In June 2013, CNN Turk stayed silent during the police crackdown on anti-government protests. At the moment, it's known at least 33 journalists are in jail in Turkey. We spoke with freelance journalist Natalie Carney, who's based in Istanbul. She says the Turkish government is tightening its grip on the media even further. They knew when they published the story this was going to be incredibly sensitive um, and they knew that something might uh, arise from this as it did and they were you know quickly called by the prosecutor to come to testify in the courts but they do stand by uh, their position that they were only doing their job and their duty as journalists to alert the public um, of what is going on and this however does not seem to be the position uh, the government holds Turkey does have a lot of grip the government has a lot of grip uh, on all aspects uh, of, of of Turkish society and uh, and the structure of it. I could say it's becoming more tightening. Yeah, I would say it's becoming more tightening just by seeing the more fr the, the higher frequency of journalists that are being questioned for their work.